Hi, welcome to another episode of Real History. I'm Steve Hathcock, your host, and today's guest is... Christian Johnston, and I work for the Harlingen Arts and Heritage Museum in Harlingen, Texas. And Christian is going to give us a little tour of some of the different areas here at the museum. Christian. Hi, well, my favorite way to start off is with Mr. Lon C. Hill's house. If y'all want to follow me this way, we'll start. Lon C. Hill was a true pioneer and one of the most forceful men to ever settle in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, one of the early accomplishments was that he convinced the Missouri Pacific Railroad to build a line from Corpus Christi to Brownsville. And by coincidence, along the way, he happened to go right past his house, which was located in a place that was called Six Shooter Junction. Afterwards, that became the city of Harlingen. And we're getting ready now to go through his house. The Lonsey Hills house was originally built in 1904. And unfortunately, before his whole family was able to move into the house, his wife Eustacia and the youngest baby, baby George, passed away from typhoid fever. Due to our subtropical climate, we tend to have a lot of diseases very prevalent in this area. So tragedy did strike, unfortunately, before the wonderful news of this beautiful house being built. So these beautiful windows that we have behind us are called shotgun windows, and they hold a dual purpose. In the 1900s, there was no AC, no running water, no electricity, so in order to keep their houses cool, they'd be surrounded by these large windows, and you open them up, and there's a nice breeze that goes through the whole house, and it feels like it's air-conditioned. But at the same time, in the 1900s here in South Texas, we went through a bandit era, and we had just gotten done taking land from Mexico, and they were pretty mad at us. So they came and they ransacked our houses, our buildings, businesses. It was a very dangerous time. And one of the ways that people protected their houses was through these shotgun windows. While the older children and the parents and the hands, the help, they would go out and protect the land from these bandits, but the younger children at home say, seven to nine year old young boys, they would be proficient in the use of a shotgun and they'd open up these windows and if you notice the height of them, it's just perfect for someone that age to slip on through with a big shotgun and protect the house. Do you know of any incidences where they actually had to protect the house from bandits? From what I understand, Lonsey Hill's house was never actually attacked. I know his sugar mill was attacked, but I know many other houses, they had issues with their houses being burned down, being robbed and other unfortunate stuff as well. It's interesting, um, you talked about how we took the land away from Mexico, which is how a lot of the Mexican people felt. So the bandits that we call bandits on this side oftentimes were patriots on the other side of the river. It all depends on which side of the river you're on. And who's writing the history. That's right. Boy, it's really cool in here. You were talking about how well they air conditioned the place with the windows being open, but this is just amazing. Well, it's a wonder what modern AC can do, but as cool as you feel it right now, that's about how cool with all the windows open it would have been. Tell me a little bit about this display. So, in the early 1900s, photographs were extremely hard to come by. They were expensive, they took a long time, and no one wanted to stay for 30 minutes sitting in front of a camera just holding their face because it hurts after a while. So, one of the ways they remembered their loved ones who had passed away instead of taking photographs, they would cut off the individual's hair and create this wonderful masterpiece of art called a hair wreath. So tell me, Christian, how did Harlingen get its name? Actually, Harlingen got its name because of two reasons. A good friend of Mr. Lonsey Hills who brought the railroads to town was originally from a town in the Netherlands named Harlingen, as well as the Netherlands being home to massive amounts of canals, which really gave Lonsey Hill the idea to bring the canals down here. He wanted to pay homage to his friend as well as to the canals, and so Harlingen came to be. That really helped in the development of the valley. Um, we have such a, a, a system of canals, and of course it builds in nicely with our risacas too. Yes. And so it really helps to irrigate and has helped make the Rio Grande Valley one of the nation's best producers of fruit and vegetables. I think we have four seasons a year yes. where we can harvest fruit and vegetables. 
Well, originally, what he wanted to grow down here was actually rice. But do you see any rice down here in the valley ever? No. No. Uh, our predominant crops that we have are you know, corn, cotton, grain, and unfortunately, South Texas weather, either it's dry or it's dry. And when you <laughs> need, you need lots of rain, lots of water to grow rice. So that was part of the reason why he wanted to do the canals to see if he could get this rice to take off. But say la vie, it never did. Well, sometimes the best intentions don't bring out what you're looking for, but when the window slams shut, the door opens to a new opportunity. That's right. They say that necessity is the mother of all inventions. To build a town, Lon would have needed bricks and mortar. How did he solve that problem? Well, Lon C. Hill, he actually built a brick-making factory down here because at the time, what takes us five hours to get to Central Texas, where all the supplies and everything to build a town were, it took about five to six days. And so with that amount of time just to bring supplies down here to build this town that he foresaw in his dreams, would have ended up taking a lot longer than he had originally expected. So he built his own brick-making factory, and we have the Lancy Hill brick. And this is the Bar K brick. Which is his brand. He, we actually have a brand over here in the hall with the Bar K. Um, many people branded their cattle, their pieces of furniture, so that people knew whose it was at the time versus just having cattle running around. By so. law, if you wanted to claim ownership, your cattle had to be branded. So, before it was called Harlingen, it was called Six Shooter Junction. What can you tell me about that? Oops. <laughs> so, in the early days, bandits were running rampant. We had the Texas Rangers, we had a lot of lawmen, and everyone had the preferred gun at the time, which was the Six Shooter. And so, that was the original name for Harlingen was Six Shooter Junction, but that doesn't really sound very appealing to people to bring them down to want to settle here and start a family a six shooter junction would you want to live in a six shooter mm, junction no not with a family no one of the other names was also rattlesnake junction because as soon as people got off the railroad there would be rattlesnakes everywhere and once again very unappealing well you know um, northern Mexico and Texas South Texas are famous for the size of their rattlesnakes. I've seen pictures of 11 and 13 foot long rattlesnakes. Before we go inside, I noticed that the foundation here seems to be wrong. The porch is slanting over here. Uh, is there a reason for that? Actually, the foundation is perfect on this house. It's one of the ingenuities of the time. Uh, as we all know, living in South Texas, either we're in a drought, it's dry, it's hot, it's muggy, or it's raining. And when it rains, it floods due to our low elevation. And so because of that, because of the flooding, one of the quick and ingenious ways that they came up to cure this problem was to put a nice slant on their porches. So instead of the water coming into the house, it just rolled right off. So back in the old days, a stagecoach stop served as more than just a place to water the horses. It was kind of a, a, a place where the whole community would come for a variety of reasons. Can you tell us a little bit about Paso Real Stagecoach Stop? Yes. Well, the way I like to explain it is that the Paso Real Stagecoach Inn was akin to the Walmart of its day. It was a one-stop shop for everything that you needed. It served as the Stagecoach Inn, which ran the mail from city to city, from down here all the way up to Beeville. So should you want to contact your friends and family, the only way you could do it back then was through mail. There was no phones, nothing of that sort. So this was located in Rio Hondo, which as we all know is kind of far out of the way compared to Harlingen. So it was a real big trip to actually just get to the post office. So instead of having just a post office, we had a wonderful general store, a restaurant, as well as a hotel. And back in that time, that really was everything and anything all in one short stop. I, I understand that um, the, the station stayed there in Rio, Hunt, or Rio Hondo until sometime in the 60s there was a hurricane and part of the station washed away and that was when they decided to move it over here and make it as part of the museum complex. Yes, so the original building was built in 1860. 
1904, when Lancey Hill brought Harlingen here as well as the railroad, he unfortunately put the stagecoach portion of this out of business because it's much faster to run the mail by train than by stagecoach. So, 60 years later, more or less, 1960, Hurricane Beulah hit us hard and washed away a portion of the original Paso Real into the Arroyo. But we were able to salvage some of the original wood from the foundation, and that's what we used in our recreation. This is the only recreation house that we have on our property. Everything else was moved here and is completely whole and 100%. They did an excellent job. I'm noticing that they have the rates up there, too. It's, it's interesting comparing those to today. Um, take the stagecoach from Brownsville to Alice, it was 40 hours. Um, your luggage, if it was under a pound, it would cost 22 cents. If it was under five pounds, it would cost two dollars. You know, and you think about now when you get on an airplane, you never know what they're going to charge you, up to several hundred dollars, yes. depending upon the weight of your, of your luggage. And then, of course, there's the room rental and the bath breaks, too. The room rental is what really I like to show to people because Everyone's rented a hotel room before. Fifty, sixty dollars is the norm. Whereas mm -hmm. here it was fifty cents. Two bits for a bath. That's right. Yeah. So we're here in the general store, and um, you're telling me a little bit about how they made candles back then. Yes, everything was used. They had to be very creative, very ingenuitive, and one of the one of their main staples of use was their animals. So they would slaughter their animals to get themselves meat, uh, to use the hides for warmth, and to use the fat to make their candles because there was no electricity. So they would make the candles and they would use the fat as well in their burning lanterns to light the outside because we all know candles don't really work outdoors. So inside we have these wonderful candle molds. You just pour the fat right in them and let them sit for a little and then you pop them out and there's Light. So, cattle were used for everything. They were able to salvage everything from it except the moo. Except the moo. <laughs> yes, the moo. You couldn't salvage that. So, tell me a little bit about the various irons here. So, with these irons, they really showcase the difference in the classes, and that's been since the days of Rome. You know, there's always been different classes and we should start off with our lower class. If you can hold it, it's well, rather heavy. That is heavy. And if, seven pounds, I'd say. Mm -hmm. If you've ever grabbed something off of a hot stove, uh, if you don't have a towel wrapped around your hand, you automatically grab it. Yes. And you burn yourself. So this one is completely made out of iron. You're going to burn yourself while you're heating it Even up to iron your is. clothes. Yes. So this is our lower class. They didn't do much mm -hmm. in the way of helping the ironer out. Whereas we have our middle class uh, and this one has a nice wood handle. It does. Yes. And if you hold it. It's lighter. Yes. Does it have a reservoir in there? This one water? doesn't. I don't believe. That just holds the piece of wood. Oh, it does oh, have one. It does. Yeah. So they would put water in there to help, help them um, do the steaming of it, perhaps. Ooh, see, I'm learning something new every day. Uh-oh. No, it wasn't supposed to come apart. <laughs> it has this little pull-up on it. And then finally, we have the upper class. This is top of its line. As you can tell, it has the nice handle. It has the wonderful engraving here as well. And then to top it off, instead of having to keep this constantly heated on top of an oven or coals, it has this wonderful little place to put your coals in it. It stays heated up instead of having to constantly oh, heat it up. Very nice. And then a nice little ash drop at the bottom as well. Yes. And keep that it all clean. Explain the vents in there to keep the, the coals hot. Very nice. Can I? Of course. Oh. Now this one weighs more than that one, but not substantially. And ergonomically, it's better designed. Put the wooden handle, you're not going to burn yourself, mm -hmm. like you see. What do you think this little guy was? Is that for pulling the ashes out? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Very nice. Iron out all your problems. One simple sweep. So you have this great, big, beautiful courtyard here. Do you use it for any kind of events or... Or, uh, things like that? Actually, yes, we do. 
not only do we have our wonderful houses on exhibit, but we also have our courtyard for rent for parties, events, functions. We do hold our annual Taste of Harlingen every October. We also have our exhibit halls inside open for different art exhibits. We usually rotate them about every three months, as well as we have a theater room available for small functions such as baby showers, things of that sort. Do you have a calendar of events that people could look at to find out what's going to be happening in two months or whatever? Well, most of the events that we throw are personal events, private events. But like I said, the Taste of Harlingen is an annual event. And then we do have our Christmas tree extravaganza and we have our quilting as well. So if y'all want to come in, uh, specifically Winter Texans, they really enjoy our quilts and our Christmas trees. But that's something that we do annually every single year. That's very interesting. Um, if people wanted to visit your website, could you give their, um, where would they go? Uh, yes, we're actually on Facebook. You can look up Harlingen Arts and Heritage Museum. And then I guess you can also check out harlingenarts.com. Oh. Well, there you have it, folks. Find them on the web. Find them in person. <laughs>